Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al, and I'm here today with a project for Not Too Shabby. We're going to be using the Hey Lady stamp set and Little Ladybug's paper pad to create a quick and easy A2 trifold card. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to make it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. The latest box of the month from Not Too Shabby is called Spring Things, and it is full of happy frogs, little ladybugs, and even a cute little spring gnome. Today, for my card, I'll be using some of the cute little ladybug goodies to create an A2 trifold card. Now, if you haven't yet gotten this box for yourself, there are a few left, so I will have it linked in the description box below, and if there are any individual pieces that I use available, I will link those as well. Now, while you're there, I have a coupon code for 10% off that is good for most non-kit items in the store. As I get started on today's process, I will tell you about other products and tools I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! We're gonna get started by cutting our card base. Now because this will have three panels to cut down on the bulk, I am using my 80 pound cardstock instead of the normal 100 pound I use for card bases. To get started, I'm gonna cut a strip that is five and a half inches tall and then leave the length at 11 inches. For the next step, I'm going to do some scoring and I'm using my score buddy. The first score I make is at four and a quarter and then I'm going to fold that and reinforce the fold. Now if you have a larger board, you could just make your score lines at four and a quarter and eight and a half, but because I don't, I put that fold back right smack on the edge of my score buddy and I score again at four and a quarter. Make sure that that is nice up and flat against that side. Now you'll see here, once that score is made, it doesn't allow the card to close. So we are going to shave just a little bit off that left edge, the left four and a quarter inch panel. So it will end up being four and one eighth. So you can either line up your score line to the four and one eighth inch mark on your trimmer, or you can line up the end of your cardstock to 10 and seven eighths. You'll see that once you take that sliver off, your card will now fold flat. Now, because I only want to use one piece of six by six paper, I need to take a little bit off that leftover little flap. So I'm gonna cut my piece to 10 and a quarter inches total width. Before I got started, I chose a piece of paper from the paper pad. I liked this one because of the green vines and then it had those pops of red color. I'm going to start by cutting this to five and a half inches tall. If your pattern paper has a direction, keep that in mind when you make the cut. Now there is a small little sliver left over, which I did end up putting in my cards, but I forgot to show. Now then you're going to rotate it back so it's five and a half inches tall and you're going to cut this at four and one eighth inches. Make sure that you do the mark that's halfway between four and four and a quarter. And now we have two pieces that are going to fit perfectly on those flaps on the trifold card. Now if you prefer a white mat, you can definitely cut these pieces a little bit smaller. I want to add a little decorative strip to my card, so I brought in a scrap of red cardstock and cut it to one and a quarter inches tall, and I just made sure that it was at least five and a half inches wide. With the leftover piece of red cardstock scrap and the scrap that was left over from cutting down my card base on the white cardstock, I'm going to cut a couple different ovals. You'll see here that when those are cut, the red one makes just a nice scallop border around the outside of the white. 
And speaking of scallop borders, that is what I cut that original red strip for. I'm going to add a scallop along one edge using this vintage Stampin' Up! border punch. Now all of the main pieces are cut so we can start putting the card together. The largest piece of pattern paper goes on the inside flap and you'll notice it does fill it entirely. And then I want to put that smaller strip on the front but I almost forgot I want to add the red scallop border first. So I did add some adhesive to the flap and then place my border on that. I put the red cardstock between the card base and where the pattern paper will go. Now if this is something you want to do, you can decide how much you want to show on the edge and if you don't have a border punch and want to skip this, you can definitely do that too. There was some overhang on both that red scallop strip and the pattern papers, so I brought in my scissors and just quickly trimmed that off. Then I tried to set up my workstation to do a little ink blending, but my cat Aspen had other ideas and she played around the br with the brush for a little bit. I eventually rescued that from her and then I'm going to be ink blending some clouds onto that white oval that I cut earlier. I just thought this would make a nice background for my ladybug. I am using, I believe, Ocean Mist ink with my blending brush and this cloud stencil, I actually got this at Michael's a few months ago and it came in super handy. Now we're going to do some stamping, so I brought in my Misty, and from the stamp set we'll be using the Ladybug and the Little Piece of Grass. The Ladybug will be with the Memento Black ink, and the Grass will be with Grass Green from Gina K Designs. I set up my Ladybug and the Grass. Now because my ink pad is dry, I knew that I would need to stamp the Ladybug twice, so this first time I am not inking up the Grass. But once I have stamped once, the next time I re ink the ladybug and I ink up the grass with green ink. After I had those stamped once, I did remove the ladybug from the door of my Misty and then I continued to stamp the clumps of grass. I would move the card sock up three squares each time, re-ink it with the green and stamp it, and I just went until I had five total. I wanted to stamp my greeting on the inside of the card. I wanted to stamp Hey Lady in there. So I brought in the card base, rotated my Misty so it was easier to set that up, and then I did my best to get Hey Lady centered in that middle section and straight across. Once that was in a good spot, I used that same Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp it. I thought the card still had quite a bit of white space on the inside, so to take up some of that, I brought in the other ladybug from the stamp set and stamped it onto that third panel in a red ink. I really like how each panel of the card reveals another little surprise. To color the ladybug image for the front, I brought in three of my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, which I will list the individual colors in that description box below. And I am going to show you the entire coloring process, but I will just put on some music here. If you don't want to watch the coloring, you can skip forward about a minute and a half. Once I had my little lady all colored, I took this piece over to my brother's scan and cut, 
and had a little accident. Um, sometimes you want to wait to color your images until after you cut it out, but I always find it easier to hold on while I'm coloring if it's on the full sheet. And unfortunately, sometimes things like this happen. But you know what? We are going to make this work and move on. Originally, I was going to pop my ladybug up on that cloud background, but now plan B is going to be I'm going to adhere it flat to it, and I'm going to stamp another copy of that same image straight down to that oval. Now to make sure I set my stamp up in a good place that later the ladybug will fit to, I'm going to stamp it once onto a piece of clear plastic, and then I'm going to slip in the cloud oval and move it around until I like the placement of it. Now before I put the oval in there I did put a little adhesive on the back to hold it in place while I inked up and stamped mainly the antenna two times onto that oval. Now it's not what I planned on in the beginning but you know what this is gonna work. I did have to do a little surgery on the ladybug. I cut off the stump of the one antenna that got ruined and then the complete antenna. And there was a little part of its head that has gotten ripped. So I put a little bit of glue right behind that and held it in place so it could dry. Once that had some time to dry, I finished working on the rest of the oval. Luckily, the five little clumps of grass cut out perfectly on the scan and cut, so I placed those onto the bottom portion. I did try to follow the curve of the oval, but I did have them overhang the edges just a little bit. Once the five clumps of grass were in place, I then adhered my ladybug just flat down onto the oval with the liquid glue, and I did my best to line up the images so his antenna didn't quite look like they had gotten cut off before. Once that oval piece was all decorated and the glue had dried, I finished putting the card together. My stamped piece got placed onto the red scallop oval, and then I want this to help keep the card closed. So I place adhesive on one half of the back, and it was a little tight to get it open. So luckily, with the ATG, I carefully removed it and rubbed away one line of adhesive with my fingers. That way, when I put it back onto the card front, it still kept it closed, but again, it was a little easier to open. Off camera, I added a few clear enamel dots, and here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this quick and easy A2 trifold card and fixed my little hiccup. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.